Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool workflow to help you select your best portrait, edit your own photos, choose the best one, and then retouch them for first a natural look. And then if you stay until the end, I'm going to show you some really cool looks and free presets I'm going to give you. I believe that in 2019, it is the best time for you to explode and be successful as an artist. And on this channel, I'm trying to do all I can to help you. You need to master Lightroom. You need to master all the editing and retouching tools in Lightroom. And this video, if you watch it till the end, can really help you. So let's go. All right, mesdames and messieurs. So I want to show you my best tips on editing and shooting portrait. Editing is a big part of it. What does editing mean? Editing means also selecting your photos. And my first tip is gonna be just about that. So you see, I shot 144 photos of this beautiful French model Melody in Clearwater, Florida. And now, uh, you know, how do you pick the best? Well, I'll show you a little trick which I love. So what I do is I basically take the first four photos by pressing the shift key and then Mesdames et Messieurs, and that's crazy. I press the N key on the keyboard, N like no. And then I press Shift Tab, and now I'm in full screen mode, and I can look at it and I can say, oh, I think this one has potential or not. I don't think any that has potential. Fine, Shift Tab to go out of full screen mode. Let's take the next four one. And while well, you take the next one because you're still in survey mode, I can Shift Tab. And once you're in survey mode, one thing which is amazing, you see you have like different cross here. So let's say I'm like, oh, I'm definitely not using this one. I can click on this and it's gonna take it out and it's gonna make the, what's left, you know, the, you know, to be selected with. And then I can say, oh, uh, this one is too bright, et cetera, et cetera. It's really cool. Then I say, I'm saying, oh, this one, I really like her expression. Okay, I'm giving it a one. Now, when I give a one star to a photo by pressing the number one, I just think the photo has potential. That's all it is, okay? I advise you, you can select like as much photos as you want, press Shift Tab, but sometimes that's a little too much. Like, you know, if it's too small, you can't really appreciate it. Uh, on this one, I'm like, oh, I don't like this one. Okay, uh, I don't like this one. Oh, I like this one. This one has a potential, I give it a one. Uh, this one, I don't like it. And this one, yeah, maybe this one, yes, I like it, give it a one, et cetera, et cetera. And you basically go through everything until you've given at least a one to every photo. Once you have done that, mesdames et messieurs, and not before, you then give a one star, and now, instead of having 144 photos, I got 35 photos to deal with, and that's a lot easier. So now, what I do is I redo that again, and I usually do it by, you know, sets, meaning, you know, she was on that background, so shift N. Okay, if I had to pick one of the two, and you don't have to pick any, but this one, I'll pick this one, I give it a two. And I go through again everything, okay, shift tab, and I'm like, oh, I think this one should really be a two, and give it a two, boom. And now, like two is like, I'm going to retouch this. Okay, now, once I've done that, so I'm gonna filter by two, and now I've got only 16 photos of 144, okay? And uh, you know, it's supposed to be my best pick. And voila, and I'm ready to retouch. So for example, I'm going to retouch this one. I, so I actually made a three star selection and I'm gonna retouch this one. So I'm gonna go to the develop module, make sure we set it on so we start and let's do it. So when I retouch a portrait, tip number two, once you select it is of course, don't go crazy like open your shadows, bring on the highlights, you know, blacks, white, go too strong. This is a human being, it needs to be, you know, you need to be much more careful. It's not like trees and rocks. It doesn't work the same way. So usually what I do is I open the shadows a little bit, I bring down the highlight a little bit, you know, do a little bit of black and white. And that's just gonna bring contrast. You see backslash gives you the before and after. It's a small change, I'm happy. But the first thing you need to do is correct the white balance. Usually what I do is I take the, the picker and I go where something's supposed to be white and I click on it and it corrects the white balance, but depends when you click, like here there's more yellow, it's gonna add more blue. I'm like, oh, that's too much blue. So, you know, it's a bit of an arbitrary the white balance because I can give, I can decide to completely change it. It's just good to give a good base. So what I do is usually is I, if I think it's too blue, I, I add a bit of yellow back in and something like this, okay. But very fast when it comes to portrait, I'm gonna add more contrast and I'm gonna put the shadows even more. Yes, there's a little too much contrast on this one. Now comes the magic, and that's the tip number three, mesdames and messieurs, is the brush. Oh my gosh, what you can do with the brush. I actually nailed uh, the, which is surprising, because I shot this at 851.4, I think. If you press I, 
yeah, 85 millimeter, 1.4, and I was at 1.4. And that's why her face is straight and so everything is sharp, which is kind of lucky. Anyway, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the magic, the power of the force. No, the power of Lightroom, of Adobe. So I'm gonna take that brush and um, by using the middle mouse on my slider, I can make it big or small. And the first thing I like to do is double click on effects so everything is done to zero. And I wanna clean up her skin just a little bit. Of course, this is far from what you can do in Photoshop and I have other videos on how you can do this much more professionally in Photoshop. But if you want to do quick, fast retouching, you took a friend out that, you know, you want the photo to look a bit better, stay along. By the way, guys, before I show you how I retouch with brushes, please like this video, smash that like button, explode it, disintegrate that like button, and leave me a comment. I read every single comment. I am obsessed with your comments. I want to know what you think. Please leave me a comment. It also helps me produce two free videos for you every week. And if you have not subscribed by some weird chances to this channel, oh my gosh, please click that subscribe button and the little bell so you get a notification every time I make a tutorial. All right, so let me show you how I do this. What I do, and this is crazy, I click on your brush, I make sure that auto mask is off and that flow and density is in the 80s. Yeah, that's how I love the 80s. And now I will brush, but before I brush, let me boost, I'm gonna boost the exposure so I can see where I'm brushing. But what I'm really trying to do is bring in the texture while adding some blur at the same time, crazy. Let me show you. So I'm gonna brush her skin really quick. So I'm using too much exposure so I can see what I'm doing and where I'm brushing. I think it's a very fast way to see what you're doing what you doing? All right, and I'm gonna double click the exposure to go back, boom. Usually what I do is, okay, you can't tell very much, you're like, oh, you did nothing. Well, 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 let's check it out. So before, after. Yeah, you see it's kind of more flat, there is less contrast on her face, but wait for it. I'm gonna open up the shadows even more, and that's gonna take out some of the shadows. So minus clarity, let me show you, I'm gonna put this two to zero, okay. If I bring the texture slide to the right, it's gonna bring really her face, you know, her skin come out really strongly. So I do it just a little bit, but then I do minus clarity. So let me do this. You see, if I only do minus clarity, it makes the whole face very soft, but it makes it like a porcelain completely, you know, sort of a mannequin, you know, not really realistic thing. So that's the new thing, it's completely new, is the texture slider. So I bring back some of the texture at the same time I do clarity for the price of the same things. Now she's got a bit of red on her face, so we could actually go and minus saturation a little bit. Oh, not that much. You have to be very gentle on saturation. Like I rarely go over 15, so 16, that's too much. Yeah, 14 is more like it. And what you can do if like she's got a bit, a lot of red here and here, you can click on new and just using a very similar brush, so a bit of texture, minus clarity, minus saturation, and I'm just gonna redo, so I'm rebrushing on the on the hardest part here. Okay, and that's too much, uh, too much, too much, too much saturation. I can tell I'm really kidding. You have to be really gentle on the saturation. On the spot heating brush, what you can do is you can actually, um, you can click here, but be very gentle because it doesn't work really well. You see there's a little spot here I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna hope it's gonna clean it. Yeah, it did a good job. But sometimes, like this one, there is another spot here. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna do a good job. Yeah, it did something kinda of weird. And there is, you know, because it sampled. So this is the circle it's sampling from and it's copying here. So if I click here, something else. Ah, it's actually not so bad. And if it doesn't work, you just press on delete. Another trick I wanna show you on the brush. Let's say you're like, oh, I desaturated too much skin. So how do you correct that? Well, what you do is you go over the brush here. Okay, so that's the big red here on the, on the nose. And that's your whole face. I can click on this one. And now it's selected, see it's in black and I can say, oh, uh, more, sa uh, more desaturation, less desaturation. You know, however you want it. And if you think the brush did nothing, check this out. Sometimes when you do it, your eyes adapt. And look, look at this, before, after. It makes a big change. So what I advise you to do is, is also press a space bar zoom out and do it again uh, before, after. So you can appreciate, yeah, I really like what it does. Also make sure that show edit pin is on auto. Let me show you why. Because when you're on auto, the pins are there and they can be edited and if you go out, you can appreciate the photo without the pins, amazing. If it is on always, it's always there. So it's really annoying wherever I go, it's there and I, you know, I can't appreciate the photo 
with these pins. And then you have selected, which is even worse, only the selected pin will appear, never use that. And never, for this is kind of bad because like you can't edit anything. So auto is really the best way to go. Uh, you know, auto, which is a default, is the best way to go. I just want to explain you why. Two things I want to do with brushes on this photo is I'm going to click on new and I want to make her eyes pop. So we'll double click on effect. I'm going to do what? I'm going to add some contrast. I'm going to add some uh, texture, some clarity and a lot of sharpening on her eyes. So make my brush small and I really go on the eyes lashes here and on and it's just going to make her eyes pop even more. Okay, if you think it's too much, you can check this out. It actually really makes a difference before, after. You just look at, look at the eyes. And um, I want to make another brush. I kind of like that. And, you know, it's non-destructive. So you're like, oh, Serge, you went overboard. Okay, well, let's just bring down the clarity, you know. Let's not discuss about this, really. Okay, uh, new. I want to do something about her lips, make them more vivid. So double-click on effect, brings everything down to zero. I'm going to bring in saturation. I'm just going to make her lips more saturated, thereafter more red. Crazy. And now let's zoom out and let's see here the before and after uh, back on the brush, the before and after the brush. So which is this slider before, after, before, after. And usually when I have like a basic thing, I, I, you know, what I do is I right click and I create a virtual copy. And now that's the, you know, this is a really cool thing I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you some free portrait presets because I can stay natural. This is the before. Oh, sorry. Let me show you, go back on the original photo. This is the before and this is the after a natural retouching. You know, it's a, it's a great shot. I love it. Maybe I would work more on the feet, but same idea. I don't want this tutorial to be like 20 minutes. Okay. But on this one, then I can go here and I've got a, a whole bunch of very strong presets. This is the vintage series because she's got like a bit of a vintage look. I thought it would work pretty well. And uh, you, go, you can pick one of these presets. I'm going to give them to you. You can try them, some of them. So just the link is under the video. The way you get the preset is this way. You just click on the link and it's going to take you to this page. All you have to do is put in your email address, click sign up for free, put in your first name, last name, and put in a password. And voila, it takes you to your library and, it just, and you just click on view. And you got the all the source files, all the Sony A7R file. Now, if you already are subscribed to my uh, uh, website, when you click on it, all you have to do is put in your email address and click sign up for free, and it's gonna add it to your library. That's all. Okay. Once you have the preset and you, uh, to install a preset, it's pretty straightforward. You just, you know, you just click here on import preset, and you, you know, with the files you just downloaded, and you can import them. So like, for example, I like this cool vintage, but I think it's a little too um, dark. So I'm just gonna maybe boost the overall exposure. So that's one look I could go for, uh, or I could say natural, and this is where we originally came from. And you know, and I would do that on every single photo. So basically that is my best tips on how to retouch portraits. Now, last week I did a video about textures and how it applies to landscapes and portrait and everything. Check it out, it starts right now.